Coming up on Theater Talk. Memories of the first time you began to attract attention to yourself as being a lovable lunatic? The day I got off the Detroiter. What was the Detroit? I felt very important in Grand Central Station. Why did you leave Detroit? Why did you leave Michigan? The ceilings weren't high enough. <laughs> <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm producer Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. And Susan, I regret to say that New York is losing one of its landmarks. We shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what? 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 That's I don't mean, going I don't mean the Empire State Building. Oh. I don't mean the Statue of oh, Liberty. I mean the great, the, the great Elaine Stritch, who is leaving New York to go back to where she came from. Well, I was going to say Michigan, but the way you're dressed, Elaine, it looks like you're going to retire to Alaska. What's going on over there? It's here? freezing in this studio. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> freezing. Do you want to leave the coat on? No. Do you want me to end up with Barbara Walters? <laughs> In Alaska. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, with chicken pox, I say Alaska. <laughs> Without chicken pox, I'll stay at the car lot. Okay. okay? <laughs> but Elaine, after all of these years of being uh, one of the great, great performers in New York, right. you have on uh, and off. On and off. You've announced that uh, you're going to move to Michigan. Where I'm you're going home. Why? Why? Because I came to New York. Nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> And I gave it a 65-year-old shot. I think that's fair enough. I am so tired of this city. Really? And but this the is costumes, the scenery, uh -huh. the makeup, uh -huh. the props, the cabs, the noise. Are you taking your push, friends? Are you taking shove. your friends who you brought here with you to Michigan? Are you Pardon guys? Me? No. The reason I I brought Hunter and Rob. With Bob me. Bowman, who's been Rob, your accompanist for yes, many, many years. Yes, been my accompanist for many, many and years. And Hunter Ryan uh, Herdlicka, is that I get Yeah, that's right. right. Who, who was in... Um, <laughs> There's no R on the end. I that? don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> who was in uh, a night music with you? A little night music with you, yeah. Oh, was he yeah. ever? Oh, was yeah. he ever? My new best friend. Yeah. No, I... So mean, long, Rob. <laughs> Bye-bye. You're done. <laughs> yeah, right. I was in that one too. Are you guys gonna? Are you I'm gonna... about ready to talk about you, but you can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't wait. Well, you brought them today because, uh, but you're not taking them with you to Michigan. No, no, they'll be there to visit me. Yeah. But I, I don't know. First of all, I love spending time with people that are younger than I am because I, mm -hmm. I, I real, really feel uh, seriously about it. I, I, I'm not going to ask you how you feel about it. I love children. Oh. That's why I work with Michael. Yeah. <laughs> we can't forget the children, those little faces looking up at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. My blood see. just chilled. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. I, it's the only show I've ever done with my gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cold studio. <laughs> but you know what I'm going to do? Oh, oh, no. Zip. As zip. only I can do it. Zip. zip. Yeah. <laughs> Walter, Walter Whitman was <laughs> it brilliant <laughs> today. Bop. Last okay. finger didn't Bop. work. <laughs> Take two. By the way, I'm gay. <laughs> We should only say that Elaine has a song that she's writing called, she's going to put into um, her next act, and her title is By the Way I'm Gay. Yes, you think and that it's the and tag I, and it's the title. It's and the tag. by the way, a new song by Elaine Stritch, and by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great farewell to New York. <laughs> so, you turn back on one of those old trains, you know, you're on the back, yeah. and then you go, ba -da 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 -bum, and you look off. Like an old, like, uh, what's that show where the woman got shot at the station? Anna Karenina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that old thing. And shot, Anna Karenina looks back and says, by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> and Elaine, not to bring up old business, but you were a regular on 30 Rock, quite fabulous, and then they killed you off and said, and by the way, you were gay. They made your character gay. Oh, that's after right. They should have said that. Know? Well, they couldn't do any worse to me. I mean, you know what Tina Fey said? What? She is hysterical. Yeah. She is uh, one of the brilliant comedians of my age. 
Mm -hmm. Well, not my age, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you, know, do you know how old I'll be t t tomorrow? Oh, your birthday tomorrow, yeah. My birthday is tomorrow. Yeah, no, please hold. Hold the applause. Ice hold applause. <laughs> <All right. laughs> what? How old will you be? 88. Wow. wow. You don't look it, darling. 106 yeah. strong bones. Let's go <laughs> I can't believe it. Can you believe it? No. You're a, you're Say a... it that you can't believe no. it. No. <laughs> yeah. Tina, Tina yeah. said this. She, she, was, she called up and she said, I want to be interviewed for Elaine's documentary because I'm having a documentary done that uh, Chem is doing. I should, it's uh, going to be at the Tribeca Film Festival. Yeah, they, they're, yeah. they're going to show it at the film festival, and so I'm very pleased about that. But I still want to know what Tina said. Oh, so Tina comes on to do an interview, and we all know how funny Tina Fey is. I don't have to tell anybody that. But here's what she said when Chem said to her, um, how was it, uh, uh, and she's going to ask about uh, Elaine. Oh! And she goes, like, oh, here she comes. You know, all this thing about me being so frightening. She said, but I'll tell you something. I forgot to tell you, Chem. Um, she, we've had seven years on this series, and we are just about finished paying for Elaine's fur bill at Saks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you wanted. That's why you wanted the coat on the show tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> no, no, wrong. I'll vouch for that. Yeah, whoa. You're off the gay scale, Alec. 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 <laughs> I got your name there for a minute. <laughs> but didn't Alec call you up and check up on you at one point when you, because you had an accident here, you, you fell and uh, hurt your eye? And, yeah, uh, I got a basket. You know those kind of baskets you get sometimes from rich actors or rich anybody? <laughs> Tony got, Ward. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's like a Tony Award. It's a basket full of goodies that nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you ever had the maid at a hotel say no? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it maybe gets you to worry. Who sent that to you, Alec, she, when you fell? No, I, I, the basket that he sent me. I got this out of the basket, and I said, oh, this, this is. This is, um, uh, I, I can't think of what the name was. It had caviar at the end of it. Pineapple <laughs> Supreme Scooby-Doo. Caviar. <laughs> with uh, inside uh, pears, lumbed. Uh, I've never read anything like the Billy. <laughs> <laughs> got it. You know? And I said, uh, Helana, would, would you like to take that home tonight? And she said, no. <laughs> and it was the best reading I've ever heard. It was just, no. <laughs> and like, she was so wise to me. Was, Thank you for the basket, yeah, But And then I called Alex and said, oh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> just what I wanted. Now, you were, have a card that you were playing around oh, with. Oh, yes. What, what, you want this to tell is us about Sheila that? Nevins. You yeah. remember I showed you this? Yeah. On there. Um, I got this on a card, needless to say, but I yeah. tore it off. Let me see if I can read it. I can't. Do you want to read it for her, Andre? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Elaine, happy this birthday. This is my birthday card. Oh, from oh, Sheila From Evans. Sheila Nevins. That's why it says, happy birthday. <laughs> Do not be depressed. Don't get smart. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, happy birthday. And get your hand off my knee. <laughs> Do not be depressed about something that happened so long, long ago. <laughs> P.S. This present is too cheap to return. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a joyful thing? <laughs> what was it that happened so long ago Sheila. that you would be? Uh, my birth <laughs> birthday. <laughs> well, by the well, way, <laughs> by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna get hell for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, you wanted to call Steve Sunheim. Yeah, they wanted yeah. to come on with uh, friends. I said, why don't you call Steve? And have I don't want to call. Come on, with, I, I want. I don't want to spend another night, day morning of my life scared to death in this city. And that's what I'd be if I had to be interviewed by Steve Sun. Is he intimidating <coughs> as personality or is it just the talent? Because the I think it's talk, everything. He's very it's, quiet and I think it's everything. No, I don't think he's quiet. No. I will tell you what I do think he is. Extremely attractive. And also I think he's one of the funniest human beings I know. And also, I, I could go on singing. Right. Mm. 
I'm like, ah. <laughs> read, yeah. what he, read, read what he sent you. Oh, he sent me this yeah. opening night at the Carlisle. <laughs> I want Michael to read it because uh, I, I can't read it. I can't read it either, Elaine. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, telegram, telegram. Ms. Elaine Stritch, the Carlisle Hotel, New York, New York. Good luck. I won't be there, so feel free to make up your own lyrics. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, you do. <laughs> now I gotta ask. I want to bring Rob in here because Rob has been your accompanist for a long, long time, and it's no secret that um, uh, sometimes uh, you you have those little areas of your mind where the lyrics have forget gone. the lyrics. Yeah, say you forget it. The lyrics. Say it. <laughs> and at Fabre survived it. Yeah. Say it. You forget the lyrics. And, and what is that like, Rob? Because you're there. I mean, you're. It's just you and Elaine. Yeah, he's there. there knowing them. <laughs> you know why? Because he's got them in front of him. Oh. oh. <laughs> so what do you do, do, Rob? Do you jump in right, jump in right away, or do you let her? No, no. It's I, I, I don't know. I, I just, just kind of, kind of feel it out with Elaine, and we kind of see what's going to happen. And I, I can t a lot of times I can tell that Elaine is still searching, mm. and I, I don't want to step in on that. Yeah, because the ad libs sometimes. Are pretty are funnier than the yeah. lyrics. <laughs> That's part of my yeah. like, By the way, I'm gay. They always get laughed, <laughs> and I wrote those myself. That's right. But also, it becomes it, it becomes this kind of sort of white knuckle moment in the show when Elaine and you, sometimes you'll say, "Don't help me," mm -hmm. and it's silence in the. She house. said that to Bernadette one night in the show. <gasps> oh, a little night. A little. Was, you do remember this? Go ahead. She was in the wheelchair. Uh, end of Act One. And she went up on a line, and she just kind of sat there. And Bernadette, oh, yeah. Bernadette, st <laughs> Bernadette started to help her. And she said about the weekend, and she said, "No, nope. <laughs> don't mm -hmm. you tell me what I'm supposed to say." <laughs> and the audience just loved. I mean, they went it great. wild. It was great. They sat there for two minutes, yeah. just ad libbing and ad libbing yeah. and ad libbing. And finally, Elaine said, "I give up," and <laughs> Fred wheeled her off. And then they burst into a pause. It was the best moment we ever yeah. had in a little night music. It's <laughs> <laughs> when you forgot. It, and you, you told no Bernadette Peters not to help you. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best. Oh, I'll tell Bernadette Peters anything I want to. <laughs> I mean, and well, that was exactly the relationship we had as mother and daughter in a little night music. And that uh, would be the perfect thing to see on the stage. You really, you, I mean, you, you must love New York. You've been here. I 60 do love New York. Nobody said I didn't love New York. And you're just tired of show business nice more than visit, New York? though, don't you? It's 65 yeah. years. Right, right. What is I it back in Michigan that you want to go back to? Uh, there's a very good restaurant on. <laughs> May not be there anymore, Elaine. No, I think it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> but I have fond memories of it. Yeah, yeah. I want to go because my family's there. Yeah. Number one, uh, all my my two sisters. Mm -hmm. There's three girls in my family. Yeah. And they're all gone. Not me. <laughs> I'm the baby, so I I, I deserve. I'm going to live the longest of all three. Mm -hmm. All the kids that they created. Magnificently well done. Bravo, Georgine. Bravo, Sally. You bet. What they did, these guys know my family. Your nieces and nephews. Then. My nieces yeah. and nephews, and they're dynamite. Yeah. And uh, so, in memory of them, uh, you're going to go back. Now, you know her well. Do you think the nieces and nephews, I'm sure they love you dearly, but they might be a little intimidated that <laughs> you're crashing. No, because their that's why I, <laughs> that's I know why I, I might be. <laughs> No, you bring back a very, you bring back an important thing, Michael, because I never knew how my family felt about me, and I always wanted them to love me. Naturally, we all do. But uh, I didn't feel that I was on top with my family. So I went into the theater, and boy, was I on top suddenly. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of kids come to New York to become movie stars, well, not movie stars, but theater, Broadway, yeah. boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then their families start to say, my mother came backstage when she saw me off Broadway in The Little Foxes about 150 years ago, and she looked, she had a look on her face like, oh my God. And mother was funny, oh my God, I didn't lick it off the ground. She said, Laney, you can do this. And it was like, surprise, surprise. And it was one of the happiest moments of my life. But how did I get her? I got through her through Lillian Hellman. Something else you told me that your mother said, which showed a, a, a Samuel, a, a, a sense of humor worthy of Samuel Beckett, that when you went to tell her that one of your sisters... One of my sisters a, was pregnant again. Yeah, yeah. She said, oh, really? She had the Detroit News <laughs> in her hands, and she had a 
a bourbon old fashioned on her table and we were in the library. And I said, George, he's gonna have another baby. And she said, turn the, the um, she turned that you have to do this with the pra. Oh, really? And then she went like that with the Daily News and said, another trip to death's door. <laughs> And but let me, let me ask you, though, then specifically, what was the Elaine Stritch family life like? Your mother and your father and the great. two sisters? To all intents and purposes, it was great. Yeah. And did your parents both have the sense of humor that you were oh my justly God, famous yeah. for? Oh, yeah. Your dad. Mm. My dad was so He was one of the funniest men in the world. He was just great. And he was a big auto executive, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 And, your, and your uncle was the cardinal or... Of Chicago. Of Chicago. Yeah. So you were not... Uh, struggling, poor, struggling the Midwestern well, family. Well, daddy and mother were started out, mm -hmm. you know, uh, counting pennies and dimes and nickels. And, and we, you know, I was born in the Depression. Mm -hmm. um, 1925 I was born. Oh, wow. 88, I'd love to say F-U-C-K, but I'm not going to, years <laughs> <Yeah>. ago. <laughs> Members of the first time you began to attract attention to yourself as being a lovable lunatic? The day I got off the Detroiter. What was the Detroiter? I felt very important in Grand Central Station. It was almost like I stepped off and said, I'm here. God you knows leave? at least, you know. Why did you leave? Why did you leave Detroit? Why did you leave Michigan? The ceilings weren't high enough. <laughs> 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 no, did you have the drive and the desire to come to New York all that time? I was thinking about it at sort of five. Really? Ish. Really? Yeah, I really was. Yeah. And when they took me to the Cass Theater or the Fisher Theater, mm -hmm. and I saw oh, movies, plays, mm -hmm. I was hooked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hooked. I knew what parts I wanted to go for when I got mm -hmm. here. None of that was, you know, I ended up singing bongo, bongo, bongo. I don't want Oh, to that was a come. great moment, bongo, bongo. Oh, yeah. But now, speaking of your early parts, tell us about this picture. You have a fabulous picture here, too. Of you as a young performer. Oh! <laughs> oh. Didn't I tell you about this? No, you got to tell us about Well, this. this is a picture that somebody sent me not long ago, and I laughed for half an hour. Yep. In 19... Oh, God. I don't know. 40-something. Make it up. Yeah, make it up. I I did uh, the opening at Westport Country Theater. Yeah, Country Playhouse, I think. T Country Playhouse, sorry, you're absolutely right. And it was the juvenile, hello, I think it's the only one I ever played. <laughs> uh, you were in Dracula. Camera? Not dra just Dracula, it was Bela Lugosi, the, the original Dracula in uh, with Elaine Stritch, I think I got that kind of billing, <laughs> which was fine. And I drank with Bella Lugosi, wow. which was you, you, much you more drank fun with Bella Lugosi? Play. What? Right, what was drinking with Bella Lugosi? Like? Well, he, I remember I was with him one night when he ordered his 17th scotch. And they said, Mr. Lugosi, you've had your last scotch in this, you know, whatever it was. And they wouldn't, and he got up and took the, you know that trick with the tablecloth? Oh, yeah. And everything stays on the table. Yeah. And he says, thank you. I will go someone else. I will go somewhere else for my liquor. Come on, Ellen. <laughs> did they, wonder why I got in trouble. Did, did they really, did the trick work though? He pulled the tablecloth off? Yeah, it worked for anything he did worked. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Scared the wow. hell out of the audience at Westport, those sophisticated people in Connecticut, you know? What's that expression? Uh, if you show us that picture again. I, I love that expression on your face. How, in your in your in your tool, your acting toolkit. What expression? How would you describe that expression? Fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I learned how to re realize that Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was more fearly fearful than Dracula. Bela Lugosi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was a nice man. Oh, oh! You want to hear a classic line he said to me mm -hmm. over a few drinks? He said, "You know, I don't tell this to many people, Alan." But I want you to know that if it hadn't been for Boris Karloff, I would have had a corner on the horror market. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the best? Oh now, you, you're leaving us, but you, well, you promise you're going to come back to New York, right? I mean, you will continue to be performing. We will well, sure, if the part's good. You'll be back. I mean, you're, you're still available. As long as it has a wheelchair in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm game. <laughs> I'm Lady, game. Before we go, before we go, we got an, an email from our friend Albert Poland, and he told he the said, producer Albert Poland. Uh, producer Albert Poland. He said to please, please ask Elaine about Judy Garland. Oh, the great line that she said to me that I told in my uh, in my show. This yeah. is Ela the favorite right, of yours. Right there, Elaine Stritch yes. at Liberty. Let, oh, yes. Yeah. Um, this is so nice to have. I brought my friends, and now it's all. She about brought. Me. She brought props, you guys. <laughs> I know, but I didn't mean it to be that way. All about you. All about you. <laughs> she brought her right. pictures. Um, brought but listen, uh, you've got an awful lot of years ahead of you. So don't get smart. <laughs> um, and then anybody says, "Tell them about Julie." This is the first thing I say. She was a great woman. She was. <laughs> the talent is just for, mm -hmm. forget about it. Just forget about it. Um, she, when I had her stay up and we were playing poker well into the morning, it was six o'clock in the morning, and she had, it was her closing night at the... Um, palace? Yeah, at the palace. And she's sitting on the, in, the, in her red dress, she's sitting on the floor at some Pierre, I think we were in the Pierre Hotel. Somebody was, gave a party for her, and we're the last to leave, and uh, always. And, uh, so finally I said, another, you know, another thing, another drink, I'm ready to go on. And she says, no, nah, 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 and she gets up. And I followed her and I got up and she put her hand out to me and she said, Elaine, I never thought I'd say this, but good night. <laughs> and I thought it was one of the best things, one of the most terrific, adorable things that anybody's ever seen. But we're not going to say goodnight. We're not even going to say goodbye. We're going to say, have a great time in Michigan. We'll see you when you're back in New York, and we might even pop out. Come visit, well, but before we go. We've got to have a little bonus for you. Yeah. It's your you're, birthday. You're kidding. Rob, can you uh, sort of lead us in a little? Uh, oh, let's do it. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elaine. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Yeah, Elaine. Blow, blow out your candles, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> Here we go. It's being revived. Glass oh, Menagerie, yes. Menagerie yeah. with uh, what the what oh. wonderful actress. Lorette Taylor. Le no, Cherry Jones. Cherry Jones, oh, of wonderful. course. Yeah, I oh, want to yeah. go to that oh, opening. Because ah. If you blow that candle out well, well, they might let you play Laura. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> In a wheelchair. So. <laughs> well, the, the only reason I say that is I did a reading of it about two years ago. I did it with you. director said, don't stand up. <laughs> I thought, this is the last reading I'm doing for you. You blew your candle out with a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm never going to forget this moment. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love you. We and it you. doesn't show towards Michael, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that's worried about the age. I'm not. Oh, no, no. Hey, who came to visit you in the Carlisle? That's other day? true. I yeah, was but there. You were, never got beyond the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. You were a cafe suitor. That's true. I'm angling for the guest room, at least, in Birmingham. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to yeah. miss you, Elaine, but we're, anytime you're in New York, you just give us a call and you're welcome. On okay, Thursday. and the next time I come, I think I'll have guts to be interviewed on the show by Stephen Sondheim. Oh, my God. Because I'm crazy about him. All right, well, he can bring his entourage as you brought your entourage. Yeah, right. That's right. Fun. So, all right, uh, Rob Bowman, great, great to see you on Theater Talk. Great thank you very you. much. Young, talented actor Hunter Ryan Herdlicka, thank you very You'll much. You'll be playing in us. Austin very soon and back in New York. Yeah, I did Austin that. last week, and I'm doing a show March 25th at 54 Below. One. And oh, I'm sure, yeah. and I'm sure yeah. you soon both will be working out in Birmingham, Michi Michigan, at the Elaine Stritch Playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about it already. We got it set up. You bet. Oh my God, it's a nice ring to it. Doesn't <laughs> I like. It. Yeah. We've got Elaine Stritch and Hunter Ryan Herdlicka in. Uh, A.R. Gurney's Love Letters at oh, the Main Street Playhouse. It's... There you go. You thought of a name of a yeah. play the other day. I can't remember what it was. What's so the that... one in the wheelchair with the, 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 the she's in a wheelchair and, and... The man who came to dinner. No, no, no. When Nathan no. Lane played it. No, it's the her scary her. one. It's the scary oh, one. Yes. Roz Russell did the movie. Oh, it's... she's got the in the, uh, in the hat box? In the hat box. Wait until dark. No. 
<laughs> Damn it. Was, yeah. What is that? Come it's, on, you we gotta have tell me what it is. Kind lady. No. She's uh -huh. it's the it's the murderer that's chopping people's heads off and he's Wait until dark. Wait until dark. And there and the head is in the hat box. No, the head is not in the hat box. It isn't wait until dark, darling. You know, it I isn't in the it. play I saw that night. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the oven. What is that play? It was just revived on Broadway with the guy that's in the Nice work. Yes, it was wait until wait dark. Wait until dark. dark. It was not wait until the wait until dark. I'm sorry, but it was. All right. Frederick, no wait. And uh, it's that really good playwright that wrote it. Frederick Knott. The Welsh guy. Yes. Yes. It's I know who you mean, and he used, cause he used to do a one man show. Because he wrote uh, the corn is green. The corn is green. Yep. And it's wait until dark. No, it isn't. I know. No, she she's a hundred percent right. We've got it wrong. It's called Night Must Fall. Yes. Night Must Fall. Yes. That's right. Yes. I yes. knew it. I Oh, you better take me man. with you. Wow. <laughs> right. You bet. You can't Hundred take you with me. <laughs> <laughs> you just Elaine, goodbye. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. That's a promise. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you and good night. <laughs>